has not heard from in a little bit. It's been a minute, Javon Quinterly. Uh, last we saw of you, you were playing a little bit at Villanova. Now you're at Alabama. Uh, as we can see behind you, you're in the Alabama uh, film room. And uh, appreciate you coming on, man. How you doing? I'm good, Jeff. It's nice to it's nice to see you. It's always nice to catch up with you. And um, yeah, you know, just getting back in the gym and you know, just just grinding, just grinding. So let, let's start with the present. All right, then we'll then we'll go back. We'll go back later to the serious stuff. But the present is kind of the serious stuff too. Of what, what's this been like for you um, being on campus? Uh, working out. Explain to me kind of what it's been like right now for those that haven't been in those workouts. How, how do you get things done? Are you playing five on five? Are you socially distancing? What have you been able to do? Uh, so it's, it's kind of been, um, you know, at first it was like individual one person at a rim, individual workouts. It wasn't a lot of, you know, three on three, five on five stuff, but, you know, gradually over time, um, you know, as I want, I want to say, like the staff members here at at Alabama, as they start to feel more comfortable with having us um, being able to play against each other and stuff, it's gradually changed. Like we're doing, um, we're we're playing, we're we're pretty much playing against each other now in practice. So, I mean, that's great. And um, you know, just the we've been getting tested. I want to say like once a week. So I've been tested probably about 11, 12 times already um, for COVID. So like the testing and the, the resources we have to get tested are, are all there. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a gradual change. You know, at first it was just one person to a, to a rim individual workout. Now it's kind of we're more getting into it. So. And what's it like down there school-wise in, in Tuscaloosa with, I mean, is it, is it like business is normal in a sense with students walking through campus or people mass on or not really? What, what What's it kind of look like down there? No, it's not normal. I mean, I want to, I guess we could say this is the new, the new normal. Very true. But yeah, no, everyone, on. Uh, it's not a lot of, uh, I mean, here and there, you'll see people walking around outside, but it's, it's not a lot of that at all. And they're just, you could tell that this whole state, not just the university, but this whole state has kind of been taking it um, a bit more seriously here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see once uh, SEC football starts up soon here. Uh, everybody's waiting on that, aren't they down there? Yeah, definitely. Is it is it strange for you coming from the Northeast where, you know, it's more basketball, right? I mean, certainly where you were at Villanova, it's all hoop. Mm -hmm. And now you're at Alabama where, let's face it, it's you guys are going to be good. I got you ranked top 20, but you know what? Nobody wants to talk about hoop right now. It's all about football. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely been an adjustment coming from, like, you know, the tri-state area where, you know, basketball is kind of – basketball is top notch. But um, as ter in terms of, uh, like, on the court, you know, how serious, you know, my coaches and stuff take it, it's, it's, it's no different than – uh, being back home so so literally we're talking almost three years to the day Javon when everything blew up mm. uh, for you for college basketball right it was September 26th 2017 I don't know how long it seems like does it seem like three years or, or more than that that uh, everything came out I'll kind of re rehash it for people that don't know everything comes out uh, the federal investigation and you are not named, but everybody kind of knows it's you. It's player five. There's allegations at Book Richardson. Uh, then Arizona assistant paid your mom $15,000 to commit to Arizona. Well, then it comes out that that's all a load of crap, that Book never paid uh, your mom anything. Uh, he told me that. He told the FBI that. You were cleared. Your family was cleared by the NCAA and you eventually played at Villanova. But uh, go back, go back to that day. I mean, three years ago, again, what was that like when you first figured out, oh man, like I'm player five? Mm. Yeah, no, I remember it all like it was yesterday, to be honest. Um, I remember I was sitting in class, I had my iPad out and I'm sitting on my iPad. You know, I just happened to, um, I seen, an, I got a notification for four coaches into bribery scandal, whatever. 
And I remember I clicked it and then I seen that Arizona is one of the schools. So right there, I was like, you know, it kind of raised, oh, uh, just, you know, I was like, whoa, like what's going on? And this is while I'm in class. And that next thing you know, that's when Twitter kind of went crazy and was just, you know, throwing my name out there and stuff. And then, um, you know, I remember my coach had ended up calling me down to the office, telling me everything that was going on. And, you know, my mom calling me and parents calling me and stuff. And it was just, it was crazy. It was, it was hectic that day. Literally when I got home from school, there was a reporter outside my house. Like just sitting there waiting, trying to, you know, get a um a statement from one of us. And at this time, it was just it was just too crazy for us. We were we were just like, wow, what's going on right now? And uh, a lot of people don't know, like Arizona's my Yeah, like we was just I was like in shock. And I was just like, dang, this must have been too good to be true. Cause a lot of people don't know, like Arizona is my dream school. Like that was my dream school. Like me and my uh, one of my um, best friends from when I was probably eight, nine years old. We always he he goes to Arizona, okay. and we always talked about going to school together. You know, just you know, living together and stuff like that. You know, that's a lot. That, that's something a lot of people don't know. But yeah, I, at that point, I was just thinking like, dang, this must have been too good to be true. You know. So you come home, talk to your family. It, it's. It's got to be a mess, right? Every night, I mean, the, the pressure on you, everything like that, on your family. I know what it did to your mom. You decommit, what was it, a couple weeks later? Decommit from Arizona. Your your, your parents your parents then kind of took control of your recruitment, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they, they pretty much took over after that. And, you know, I chose Arizona over Villanova. So Villanova, um, you know, they still – they still were in contact with me, even like Ashley Howard was still in contact with my parents, even yep. after I committed to, to Arizona. So once I decommitted, you know, it was kind of already established. Like that relationship was three, four years ongoing. Basically, they they offered me when I was a, a either my the end of my freshman year or the beginning of my sophomore year in high school. So you know that that relationship was kind of already there. So and you know my, after that. My family as a whole, we kind of didn't know who to trust. You know, the trust was kind of lost between a lot of people. And, and But we knew we could trust Villanova because just how long they've been recruiting me. And um, it was, yeah, like the relationship was already established, you know, like. And, um, and there probably, Javon, there, yeah, there probably weren't a lot of uh, schools that were going to take you at that point also, right? I mean. Yeah, like a lot of, they didn't know whether I took the money or not. Yep. And it, it's crazy that it took so long of a time for, um, you know, the basically the, the media to know that I never, me and my family never took anything from Arizona. It shouldn't have took that long, you know, but. What, what did it do to you mentally? What did it do to you mentally that, that final year of high school? Where were you at? How did it affect you? Again, I know your mom. I talked to, to your mom a little bit, and I know how badly it, it hit her. Um, but as a, mm -hmm. I don't know how old you were then, 18-year-old kid, how are you dealing with this? Because you you had no knowledge of anything that either went on or didn't go on. I mean, you're, you're, you're a kid. Yeah. Um, I feel like on the court, I handled it well because it was just fueling my fire. Um, you know, opposing fan base was saying saying certain things that, you know, I wasn't paying attention to. But on the court, I was fine. It was off the court where, like, I'm seeing the effects of my my parents, um, close friends. Like, it was it was tough. It was definitely tough. Um, you know, seeing my mom go through that, knowing she didn't she didn't do anything wrong. Um, and you know, I kind of felt a certain way because my parents, they wanted me before I committed, they wanted me to go see Kansas. They wanted me to go see two other school, two, three other schools, but I was just, you know, I was ready. Um, so like that, thinking of that, like my dad saying, like, yo, hold on, like go go look at Kansas, you know. And I was like, No, I'm ready, I'm ready. But then I I would think like, dang, if I would have listened to him, went see Kansas, you know, like Kansas, went to Kansas, it would have been I'll be in a different place right now. So, you know, it was tough. It was tough. Um, it was definitely tough, but 
I feel like I, I handled it the best way I could. So you go to Villanova. It is, uh, it's not pretty. Let's face it. It is not pretty in terms of everybody's wondering why isn't he playing, right? Why, why is he only getting eight, nine minutes a game? Um, you barely mm -hmm. play throughout the year. Then you don't play at all. I don't think you saw a minute in the big East or the NCAA tournament that year, right? Didn't get off the bench at all. Yeah, I didn't play in a tournament. Or, or how, the how are you tournament. dealing with that? I mean, again, you're just happy at this point in a way to be playing because a lot of people thought you shouldn't be playing and a lot of schools weren't going to touch you at that point. Villanova does. NCAA clears you, um, which kind of validates the fact that, that your family didn't do anything. But, but mm -hmm. now people are questioning you for the first time as a player, aren't they? Yeah. What happened? I um, guess what? What happened there? I mean, was it mental more than anything else? Yeah, it was mental more than anything else. Um, you know, I'll never say anything bad about that program. You know, a lot of things that I do here now at Alabama, um, I brought with me from that program, and I learned a lot. Jay Wright is a great coach. Um, my teammates, I love my teammates, you know, every single one of them. Still, still to this day, still to this day, talk, with, talk to those guys. Um, but it was, it was, it was, it was tough. You know, it was just an, a, a big adjustment I had to make. Um, you know, I felt like my game was kind of limited there and I wasn't able to, you know, showcase, um, you know, just the creative side of me when I had the ball in my hands. I, uh, it was, it was, it was tough, man. I, I did, it took me some time. I think that's what that was the biggest thing. It took me some time to learn how they play, uh, learn the system as, as well as, you know, the other guards on the team, Phil Booth. But, like, having those guys, Eric Pascal, Phil Booth, Colin Gillespie to, you know, after practice go and talk to, that was, that was great. But it was more, it was more in terms of le uh, learning fast. I think I, was, I wasn't a, a quick learner there. I was real slow. Um, it was just, it was a big adjustment. Like I had to change the way I never had played that way. So it was, it was kind of hard to adjust. Right. For people that don't know, I mean, you play it up and down entire high school AAU. That's, that was your system. You go to Villanova, probably doesn't fit you as well. Um, and, and you're dealing with depression, you're dealing with other issues uh, emotionally, which mm -hmm. I'm sure played into it. Uh, in addition to the fact that you're, you're a typical freshman, trying to learn a completely different style than you've ever played. I'm wondering too, how much was it in your mind of, I shouldn't be here. I should be at Arizona. Were you thinking that throughout the year too, and kind of playing the blame game a little bit on other people and saying like, why did this, this shouldn't have happened to me. This isn't my fault. I should be at Arizona right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that thought ran through my head a couple of times, but, uh, at one point I was like, you know, this is where I am now. Uh, I got to make the best of it. You know, my family's happy. I'm here. Um, I just, you know, I was just like, I got to make the best of it. Like, this is, this is where I am right now. It's, it's no going back. It's no going to Arizona now. Like, this is what I have to do. And, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of approach I had started. I had started to take a little bit into the season, but I felt like by then it was kind of like, it was too late. What were, was some of it too, just like, cause obviously it had to be in practice, right? I mean, because you weren't playing a whole lot. So it was tough to evaluate you on the court during the games, but in, in practice, was that the biggest issue where maybe you're making some plays um, and being careless with the basketball and, and Jay Wright couldn't trust you that way with running the, the system that they have, which is a little bit more, um, I don't know how to say it. A little slower. A little slower. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we could. I mean, I, I guess we could. Like, I had good days. I had bad days. But um, it was more so he couldn't trust me because I just wasn't grasping that. I wasn't grasping the way that they play. Yep. And um, I feel like that's ultimately what it came down to. Like, coach couldn't trust me um, because, like, I, you know, sometimes I miss – um, a char uh, an attempt to take a charge or, um, you know, some of the blue collar stuff that 
I wasn't also I wasn't used to doing in high school that I learned obviously at Villanova, but I, I wasn't. I just it's it's hard to explain. Like I just oh, I get I, it. I wasn't quite there. I get it. And then it's funny. I remember talking to to Jay during the season and asking him straight out asking him and and Jay's pretty honest and and he kind of said that he was mm-hmm. like listen you know he's having trouble picking things up and you know obviously it's a trust thing right I mean if he can't trust you on the court and I'm sure you as a freshman you probably didn't quite understand it as you're going through it right I mean again mm-hmm. with everything that happened to you it's tough to be so mature I, I wonder how much that's changed from from you two years ago to you now looking back on it and saying yeah you know what well, some of it's on me, you know, I, I got to take accountability mm-hmm. for, I probably wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now looking back, because I've had a lot of time to obviously sit back and look back now that, that I didn't play last year and I'm still, you know, grinding until our first game. Um, but yeah, I, I take full accountability. Um, I wasn't ready um, I, I didn't come in knowing exactly what I was putting myself into. Also, I didn't, you know, as I didn't really do my research, um, you know, prior to making that decision. And, but I know there's no going back now. I just got to look forward. And that's what I look forward to doing. Just, you know, um, you know, just showing, showing everybody that, you know, that was, that was two, three years ago. Like this is now. And, you know, kind of just taking everything, playing my game, you know, and trying to make make this school just as, just, just as much as a football school, a basketball school as well. I got, I got you ranked uh, 18th in the preseason. Everybody's killing me for it. Everybody's killing me. That. Now, in, in all fairness, I've ranked Alabama pretty high the last two years, and it has not worked out well for me, okay? So I'm hoping you make me look good um, this year. I guess, how much did you learn? What was the, the main thing that you learned uh, last season while sitting out? You didn't want to sit out, I know, but they didn't give you the waiver. You end up sitting out for the year and, and practicing against one of the best point guards in the country, and Kyra Lewis, who's hopefully, I mean, mm-hmm. I think it should be a lottery pick this year. What did you learn, though? Um, I learned a lot about this conference. Um. I want to say at first I was very upset that I couldn't play like, and it was obvious even in practice, like you could tell like I was pissed off. But um, after some time that went by, um, I looked at it as another growing point in my life. And um, I really started to watch, I think this is when I really started to actually watch basketball. And, um, you know, every, I was at every, yeah, I was at every game last year. And like, I just sat there and I just literally watched basketball. And I didn't watch as a fan. I watched as as like a, a player that's about to go in the game. And I feel like that was the biggest thing I learned. Um, you know, some of the reads, uh, the way some of these teams in the SEC guard, how athletic these guys are, because there, there's some athletic guys in this yeah. conference. Um, but like, I actually got to sit there and watch watch basketball I watched Kyra out me and Kyra we was like this last year like we we went at it and practiced every day I tried to we just made each other better um you know he would come up to me he would say like yo I wish she was out here helping me helping me handle the ball you know you know what I'm saying but like I would see things that he wouldn't see and I'd go up to him I'd tell him like yo this is what I see like and he he listened to me and um you know, just being able to sit back and watch basketball from, you know, literally the front row every game, that's probably what I learned the most because I kind of, you know, yeah, I kind of, um, I don't, how can I say this? Um, well, because at Villanova, I assume at Villanova, Javon, you're, you're frustrated. You're not watching it that way. You're probably angry sitting on the bench where last year, again, halfway through the year, maybe even a quarter of the way, um, it kind of, you know, you knew you came to the conclusion you weren't going to play. So there was nothing you could do about it. Where Villanova, my guess is you're fighting it a little bit more. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I felt, and another reason was at the time, I didn't know why I wasn't playing. Right. 
So that's what made it even more upsetting for me because I'm like, like, why am I not playing? Like, I had a good practice yesterday, but, you know, <laughs> but it, it, it's, yeah. it's, much more than, it's much more than that. It's much more that, that goes into it. And um, so, yeah, you're, you're spot on with that. So, all right, give me the rundown of this team this year and why I'm gonna why I'm gonna look good. I know I got you know you in there, uh, Jordan Bruner in there. This kid Josh Primo, who's supposed to be pretty good coming out of Canada, a fellow freshman. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you got Petty back. You got Shackleford back. You got uh, Herb's one of my favorite players. Period. And kids, there is in the country because Herb Jones is all about the right things, right? I mean, there's nobody more about winning than Herb Jones because if he wasn't he'd be doing what everybody's telling him to do, which is shoot, shoot, shoot more. Instead, he just wants to guard and rebound and do all the little yeah. things. Uh, give me the rundown on this thing. That per- um, I'll start with, I mean, Herb, Herb he, he's inspired me so much, especially last year, you know, playing with one cast. Like, man, it's times, like, I'll be in the locker room, like, yo, bro, like, Literally a halftime or something like, yo, I don't know how you're doing this right now. Like he's lit, yo, literally with one hand. I'm like 18 rebounds against L. Was it LSU? I'm like, yo, I don't know how you just did that right now. But like he earned my respect probably the second, third day I got here. Like I already knew what he was about. But in terms of us as a, as a team this year, like I'm really excited to to get out there with these guys. Um, you know, coach has been on his heart. You know, we all been in the gym for a couple months now, you know, fighting every day, um, take it, just taking everything step by step, you know, because there wasn't much we could do at first when we first got in here. But, you know, just having, you know, JB, uh, basically a five that could pass the ball, that's great. And he could shoot it. I mean, everyone, pretty much everyone could shoot the ball. So it's going to be super hard. Um to, to guard us with everyone shooting at a high clip. And um, I just feel like coach has been, you know, instilling the right things in us, you know, making sure we're, we're also guarding. Cause that was a big, that was a big thing on us last year is that we, we were we not really good. get a lot of stop. Yeah. Yeah. We were not good defensively last year. So, you know, that's, that's the big emphasis on us right now. Um, but now I'm super, super excited. You know, the freshmen have came in with, um, you know, the right mindset because, you know, everyone, well, those guys that came in, they knew my situation. So, you know, that right away, they kind of respected the things I would, I would say to them about, you know, coming in as a freshman, because it's not easy. It's not easy anywhere, right. you know, whether it's a, a power five school or, you know, a Ivy League school, like it's, it's not easy coming in as a freshman and adjusting to, you know, study hall, practice, got to go eat, then back to the gym. So, um, you know, those guys have been, they've been great. You know, Josh Primo comes up to me all the time and asks me questions. How and, good is um, he? Give me, give me the scouting report on Primo. I've never seen him. No, Primo, Primo's tough. He, he's a, a big, big combo guard that can shoot it, get to the basket. You know, we're, we're, we're working on him with his reads right now. Because it's hard, coming out of high school, it was just me, but I didn't know all the reads until, like, I want to say like my last, I, I'm not even saying I know all the reads right now, but like I wasn't consistently making the right reads until probably last, sometime last year in practice. Really? So like, I know how it is for like a guy to come in and be like, oh, like I never knew that that lift pass would be there that much, you know? So like having a guy like Josh Primo or Darius Miles that ask me questions, like it's great. Um, coming in as a freshman because it's easy to you know shy away and just not say anything but like I feel like the freshmen have been have been great thus far but yeah to answer your question Primo he's he's tough he can shoot it he's a big combo guard that can shoot it dribble you know make the right read and finish at the basket so it's, he's tough hey do you think the the, the jelly fam stuff did that hurt you guys at all? <laughs> you think looking back on it, you got a lot of attention, all you guys, you, Isaiah, uh, Naz Reed. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, looking back at it now, I do kind of think it hurt us because we all have a very bad perception 
Um, especially like one, because we all did transfer except Nazi. We all did transfer. I wow. transferred, Isaiah transferred, Sid Wilson transferred, Jordan Walker transferred. So that that there alone kind of gives us the perception that we run from adversity. Yep. And um, you know, as much as the attention that we got, like a lot of people don't understand, like we did it for the younger guys coming up behind us, you know, to give them a way of being creative around the basket. Cause you know, everyone's not six, six and could jump out the gym. Sure. So that's kind of, that's, <laughs> that's, that was our goal when we, when we created it was to, you know, give hope to the, the young kids coming up that, you know, being creative around the rim is, is kind of an art. I mean, ask Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that, but to answer your question, I do think it kind of did hurt us because, like I said, the perception that we give off, like we run from adversity, um, and you know, we all kind of just, you know, it's just taking us some time. But yeah, that's that's what I would have to say about that. So, give me where you're at now, uh, emotionally, mentally. Like, are you, uh, and and even with like mental health, like. Are you open with that now? I mean, is that something where you never, before everything that happened to you, um, you never would have been as open as you are now about talking about what you've gone through and where you are and maybe trying to help other people that uh, that are dealing with adversity? No, yeah, I'm open with, I'm open with, you know, my mental, my mental health. Um, obviously at Villanova, I was, I was in a bad state of mind. Um, you know, still to this day, I see somebody here at Alabama and I speak to her. Um, I speak to her quite often just about everything that's going on in my life. Even if nothing's bad going on, I still go to talk to this lady. So, you know, Alabama having those resources is, is amazing. And, um, you know, um, just to all my other athletes out there, you know, it's, it's not anything to play with because, you know, just sitting there holding everything in, like that's not – that's not the right thing to do. Like you want to be able to talk to somebody. And if you feel like you can't talk to anybody, that's where I feel like the university has to come in and give, give that person somebody to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Has it been hard? I mean, you you were in a draft class with point guards, Trey Jones, Ashton Hagens, um, Kobe White was in that class, Dotson, right? I mean, even mm -hmm. uh, uh, quickly. Everybody's gone, right? I mean, everybody's out of college basketball now, and you're like, you're almost like getting in for the first time in a way, Javon. Like, is it is it strange? Crazy to think about. You know, I watched. Uh, I was, I just was with Nazi not too long ago, and just seeing, just seeing him right now, it's it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. I can't believe times times flew like this. Like time's really time's flying, and it's it's crazy to to really sit back and think about. But like, like guys like that, Kobe White, Dotson, like it's crazy that you're saying they all out, and like I'm just coming in. That's right. that's crazy. I, mean, I feel like I mean that's part of the reason why we're doing this. Like like I feel like people have completely mm -hmm. forgotten about you, and and like when mm -hmm. you go out there for Alabama this year, they're gonna be, oh yeah, I remember him, you know, from like mm -hmm. three years ago, yeah. and. uh I think it's going to be interesting to see how different you are, how much more mature you are both on and off the court because of everything you've gone through in the last three years. And, and again, like you said, Hey, Villanova, it wasn't the right spot for you. Could you have fought it out? Maybe, maybe, but um, ultimately I think what you learned at Villanova in terms of going through what you did and understanding that, right. Every practice you've got to be at a certain level. It's not just about that last practice before the game. It's about that whole week's practice, yeah. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, this style should help you, I would assume. This is like the ideal style for you, isn't it? Up and down. Uh, Nate will let mm -hmm. you go, won't he? Yes. No, that's that's been something that was big when I decided to transfer. Uh, I just made sure, you know, I chose the right – place where they let me you know be me be who who I am and you know that's ultimately what got me to where I am now
is the way is that that style of play because that's like you said that's all I played in high high school all the way up so you know that was that was ideal in, in choosing uh, my transfer spot and I honestly I couldn't be more happier I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life right now um you know the season's two months away so I'm, you know I'm just I'm grinding every day coming with the right mindset and you know, I just just ready to, you know, like you said, make a make another splash and you know. If if I had ever told you three years ago so today, th think about this, Jimmy. If I had ever told you three years ago today yeah. that you'd be at Alabama, at Alabama, what would you have said to me? I would have chuckled. <laughs> right? <laughs> Alabama, like I don't know. You didn't yeah. even know where Alabama They didn't was. even recruit me at a high yeah, they didn't recruit me. Never got a call. Until, I would, you know, they old Scott. Yeah, I mean, you weren't going to Alabama. I mean, there was no chance you were even looking at Alabama three years ago. I know it's crazy. It's have crazy. you? And I don't even know if you can answer this. You don't have to if you don't want. Mm -hmm. to. Have you talked to Book Richardson at all since everything that happened three years no. ago? No, I haven't. Would you like to? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I think my, one of my parents, I don't know which, but I, I think they did have a conversation with him. <clears throat> like face to face. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. No, I mean, listen, he, he, he said to me, he didn't give anybody the money, you know, obviously, um, you know, I think that probably helped. Uh, you'd be eligible to play at Villanova that year if he didn't say that to the to the feds um, and, and publicly. I don't know how much that would have changed things, but um, well, it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. November 25th, can't come here soon enough for you, can it? No, that's my birthday, too. Wow. Really? How old are you now? Yeah. How crazy. I'm going to be 22 on the 25th. You're an old man now. I'm old, bro. This is crazy. <laughs> Yo, you gotta find out who you're, wait, wait. You got to find out who you're playing on the 25th. That's the biggest thing right now. You don't know if you're playing, who you're playing, none of this. I can't believe that, though. Like, the season I come back starts on my birthday. Like, that's – Hey, that's, that's crazy to me. Tell Nate, tell Coach Oates – that you want to schedule Villanova for the opener. Tell him, <laughs> tell him you want to go back home. <laughs> it would be good to go back home. Go somewhere. Where, where, where's the closest been. school? Where's the closest school to home for you growing up? Rutgers. Rutgers. There you go. Tell him, come on. Go play Rutgers. Go to the rack. St. Peter's. St. Peter's. Hey, hey, I love playing at the rack. Hey, you're not going I, to St. Peter's. <laughs> They might come down no. Alabama. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, they have – yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you, you, you're, but you're buying the rack, that. I, would, I wouldn't mind going to the rack. I'd be I Bob Hurley at the rack, so I wouldn't mind. <laughs> hey, yeah. how, how, how much – I'll let you go on this one. How much has your outset now changed on – my guess is you were thinking, I'm a one and done going into college. Maybe not when you, when you got well, there. Honestly, that happened but how much has your your whole mindset changed of that now while like we talked about all those other point guards are already gone from college H have you changed completely mm -hmm. on that well honestly Jeff coming in I kind of knew I wasn't going to be a one and done because I knew my body I knew my body wasn't there yet I knew it'd probably take me you know two to three years and I didn't I didn't you know I didn't mind it taking as, as long as it as long as it should, like, you know, I kind of just, I came in knowing I, I didn't, I was never, I never publicity said, publicly said that I was a one and done coming in. Um, I, I'm, I just, my mindset has always been on, on the NBA is, you know, um, if, if it happens, it happens. Like I, I kind of just go with the flow. Like that's how I feel about that. Have a good year. Uh, also, right, have a good um, year. Win games this year, and who knows what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
But now, you know, like you said, seeing all those guys go, it's not really – as much as people would think it's putting pressure on me, it's, it's kind of not really putting pressure on me just because I have that, that mindset where I just, you know, go with the flow. You know, everything everything happens for a reason. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. So that, that's just that's kind of my mindset and how I've been approaching approaching that. Everybody runs their own race, man. Everybody runs their own race. And some get there quicker than others, but – um, you know, like you said, listen, you just got to be consistent, uh, every single practice, every single game. It's good to see you smiling again. That's, that's the biggest thing. It's good to see you smiling with everything you've gone through. The fact that now you've got that kind of fresh start and, and you seem to be in a really good place, uh, emotionally. I'm, I'm, I'm glad for you, man. I'm glad. I can't wait to see you hopefully on your birthday, November 25th, we can turn on the TV and and see kind of the, the old slash new uh, JQ, all right? Yes, sir. I appreciate you, Jeff.